morning out of uh, Luke 15 uh, and uh, verses 11 through uh, 24. It's about the prodigal son. So, oh no, I've heard that message. I've heard it, and maybe you have. Maybe you haven't. Uh, titled it this way: What was left? What was left for the prodigal? You no, know, he. Uh, if you read the scripture in verse 11 and find out he, he got all of his substance. He said he came to his dad in verse 11. He said, I, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that follow to me. And he divided them to them his living. Uh, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine uh, in the land, in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and, and he sent him into the, his fields to feed swine. Now, I'm going to just stop for a second. You've got a picture of this. This is a Jewish boy. Jews are having to do with swine. And yet, this boy, uh, given all of his substance, goes into a country, uh, no doubt, uh, I don't know what the country was, but uh, Gentiles, no doubt. And the first job he has to take in order to survive is feeding hogs. Uh, and it says, and he would fain have filled his belly uh, with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great far way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring the head of the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is, is found, and they began to be merry. Verse 17 is my text verse. It says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hard servants of my father's have bread enough in despair, and I perish with hunger. You know, he had, he had wasted everything, that portion of substance that was his. He, had, he lost all his influence, actually everything. It just seemed like there was nothing left for him, with the exception of some things that we're going to point out. I know uh, people that get so far away from God, they think that, they can't come back. Uh, they've done so many things that they hold it uh, actually against themselves. But I hope that uh, if not someone here, this will be something you can uh, use to help someone know that there's something left for them. They might have wasted a lot of their life, their energies, their youthfulness, or whatever, but there's a great God in heaven and I, I believe this, uh, this sign pictures the, the center that's uh, is backslidden. I don't believe it's really uh, unsaved. Uh, he, I believe that you know he was already a son, but he was uh, had ran away from home, and he had messed up a lot of ways. But the first thing that we see that that was left uh, waiting him mercy. Oh, what a great God. Mercy is a, a word we use, pity, showing pity on someone. God is a merciful God. 
Uh, his, his mercy endures forever, the Bible said. Uh, he's always ready to show uh, kindness and, and uh, pity for, to his people. Uh, and uh, more especially, uh, the lost sinner he wants to bring him home. You know, this young man, he remembered he had, he had been deceived into thinking uh, that he would he could find a good life out in, uh, in the world. He'd have his money, he'd have all that to, to live off of. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think he was going away thinking about the, the party life, the riotous life that's living. I think he was going away uh, he was going to be his own man, so to speak. But he wound up with uh, people that, that uh, just, it was party, one party after another until, uh, and he had a lot of friends, uh, so-called as long as he had the substance. But when all the money was gone, and then God brought a, a, a famine in the land, I mean, there was no friends. He, he had wasted a, a life uh, just going through the gates of sin. Whatever it was, it didn't make any difference. He was, he was going to go through it. And he had the money at the time to go through it. But in all of that, all he found was misery. And uh, wound up in like a slave to it. No one cared. He said there was no man cared uh, offered to even help him, give him anything. And you know, I can relate to that in one degree is uh, not that bad, of course, but being in the military, I found that as long as you had a dollar bill, you had friends. As soon as you didn't have a dollar bill, where were they? They weren't with you. They were gone. But he remembered that he had he'd been deceived. He, he, he suddenly realized that what he had uh, found that, uh, before he left was his thinking, Got to be a great life out there, and went out and found nothing but misery and slavery. But he also remembered when he was uh, destitute of friends, uh, food, and clothing. He had found he found nothing but uh, poverty, and that it was starving to death for food. Now he don't have to stay that way. He remembered that he had simply uh, drifted into a far country. And there was nothing there. Uh, when you talk about famine, there usually means you can't even grow anything to eat. You know, everything's barren practically. But what was left for him was mercy back when he gets to his home. And what was left for him is, is he still had a reason. He could still reason. He still had reasoning in his mind. He had lost all of it. He still had a mind that he could remember. He said in verse 17, the last part, how many hard servants of my fathers have bread and enough and to spare, and I perish for longer. He's reasoning with himself. You know, isn't it, isn't it a great thing to have memory? You know, I, uh, I, my dad died in that, in, in that 1991, and, and uh, I still think of him. Sometimes I, I, I always have to just talk to him and things I forgot to ask him, and I wish I could ask him those questions, you know, ask those questions now, uh, which if you're listening to me, if you have someone, you better ask them now, and once they're gone, you lost a lot of things that went with them. Uh, memories of how things were in the last years. Uh, you know, like uh, the song says, remember, they flood my soul. Uh, they do that sometimes, thinking of mother and, and dad. Uh, you know, uh, every year we have a, a reunion, we have an auction, and this year we raised almost $700 and just selling things that we bring out of our houses, you know. I, I started to put one of my grandsons up and I figured it would sell. Uh, it's all you need him. <laughs> and I do, Chris. Anyway, uh, we divide that money up and give it to two cemeteries to help keep them 
clean because we have a, a lot of relatives in one, and then in another one we have about five or six that we help. That's why we bring the money to them. Uh, but thinking of those memories of all those people, one day there's going to be a great reunion in heaven that we can be with them. Right now, this guy, this young man, is thinking clearly. I'm starving. I don't, you know, my dad's of servants. Have, they have bread left over, you know. And here I am. I'm, I'm hungry. He's eating the husk of what the hog would eat. And verse 14 says, When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And they began to be in want. Is without, and he went and joined himself to to a man, or rather, to a citizen of that country, and he he sent him to feed the swine. And now, I like these words. Uh, he's thinking about his father. How my father has a bountiful table, bread with good. Foods, good things to eat, and I'd have my stomach filled. Uh, I've been blessed over all my years not to ever be, have been really hungry, hungry, you know. But I, I've been hungry enough from where I would get to get shaking, you know, from not stopping and going and get, getting something that was available. Uh, but I can't imagine being in a position where all you can do is eat what the hogs eat and uh, think about what it's like back home and wonder what it's going to be like. And finally coming to a conclusion and a decision, I'm not even worthy to be my father's son. I'll just admit it. I'm, I'm, I'm I've gone away. I don't deserve it. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like I don't even deserve to be saved? In reality, sometimes that's true. You don't think about it. But God so loved you that He sent and gave His only begotten Son to die on that old rugged cross. You know, when you, while you still have your, your uh, right mind, you need to make a decision. Or you can still think. I found out this week that my neighbor, he lives in Fort Worth with his mother right now, but he, he's only 54, and he said he already has uh, dementia. He's beginning to show the signs of, of losing his memory. Uh, it makes my heart ache for him because he's a good man. Is going to go through that. But you know, there's a lot of people in this world that just smashed out of the world in a moment's notice. I think Brother Nick said one time, I don't remember for sure, if I'm saying this right, but every second there's three people dies that go somewhere out into eternity. And that's a lot of people in this thing about a clock ticking, people dying. And they're spending eternity somewhere. And, you know, they're, they had a memory. And they made a choice. And some wait too late where they can't even make a choice. They get so far away from God, too, sometimes that they, they can't seem to have the strength to come and make that kind of decision for God. You know, so it just makes sense if you got a good mind and you still have a memory to make decisions for God, to do what He would have you do. You know, what was left for this boy was uh, he had mercy back home and, and uh, he had a, a father to go to. Uh, what also was left is, is a home. We go home. But he's willing to say, I'll live like a slave. I may not, I might, he may not want me to live in his house. It's 
So uh, you also have a home book, Palmer too. You know, that song, and Hallelujah, what a Savior, and take the poor off center, licking from the mire clay, and set him free. That's why, that's why Jesus came to do that for every lost person in the world. You know, there's a, in our Father's house, all the Lord Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. And all of them, he went on to say, I go to prepare a place for you. So we have something to look forward to. If you haven't come to Christ, so you, you're invited to make that decision to come. And then you can fish on what he has laid out ahead for you. There's a song, Come, come and Dine. That's what we need to do, come and join the Lord. Eat at his table with him. Prodigal had a home waiting for him. He really had no idea what he, how good it was going to be. You stop and think about it. He had a father that had such a great love that it covered, as the scripture says, all of his sins. You're, you're, home, you're home, and I'm glad you're home. He gave him a big old hug and a big old kiss and told him to put a, the best robe on him and a ring on his finger. Still has an inroad with his family. And uh, there'll always be someone there, though, that's jealous. He had a brother, <laughs> and that brother couldn't hardly stand it the way they treated him. And he had stayed there and never left. And, you know, his father said, yeah, but you still have everything. Your brother's home now. He's been gone. A lot of people condemn others because of the mistakes that, that leads them all in sin and thoughts that they gave. But he, left a, he had left a, a wonderful home, and he had a home to come back to that was waiting for him. He also uh, had power left. He said, you know, if you have the least inclination to come, you know, Christ, you need to make it. You got the strength to do it. You got out of bed today, and you had the strength to come to the church. That shows you had the power to get here. You had the, you had the inclination to get here. You have that there, and you also have the inclination to, uh, and the power to make decisions to live for God, to honor God, to be where He wants you to be at all times. You know, uh, so many have just gotten so deep off in the sin, though, they, they don't have the power to make the choice. Seems like they're just they're whipped. And they lose out, and it's sad. You know, there's a story about a guy in prison and a minister talking to him about the Lord, trying to lead him to the Lord and ask him if he would uh, accept Christ as his Savior. And he said, I do have my senses and the power to choose, and I choose Christ. And that's your decision. And that's what you have the privilege to choose. Uh, not just to choose Christ, but choose to be dedicated to living for Christ, whether it's here at home, on, and on the job or at play, wherever it is, I make my decision to live for Christ. Uh, you have that privilege. I have that privilege. Uh, we can say today, I am not, I'm saved. I dedicated my life to the Lord, but today I rededicated him. I'm going to live for him. The, the prodigal said, I will arise and go to my father and, and I'll admit. I'll just tell him what's in my heart. Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. But guess what? He made that decision. He was able to make it. And he got up uh, from where he was and headed home. And I can almost see that father 
probably every day looking out to see if his son is going to come home. And one day, he sees him. And the Bible said he ran. That just gripped my old heart to think how God loves the world so much that it moved him. And a sinner, a lost sinner, comes to him, he's ready to grab him, hug him, and welcome him into the family. When a child of his has gone astray and makes a decision to come home, that he gets in a hurry to welcome him and make him feel like he should feel. You're my kid. You're mine. And I'm glad you're, you're coming home. You know, the Bible's so clear. It says, whosoever will may come. God is not willing that any should perish. Regardless of the false teachings in the world, God's still not willing that anyone die go to hell. And he's really not willing that any one of his children not enjoy Christian life by living and enjoying him. Revelation 22, 17 says, In the Spirit, in the bride, the Holy Spirit, in the church, says, Come, and let him that hear it, that you and me, say, Come. Let him that is a thirst, one that wants to be saved, let him come. And whosoever it will, let him take to the water of life freely. The prodigal was blessed in that he made the right decision and he came home. You and I can make that decision today. I haven't met, in other words, I can say if I've been that way, Lord, I haven't been where you want me to be. I haven't been doing what you want me to do. I'm back. Use me. If we all stand. We ask the song leader to come. Verse of invitation. And we invite you to come. On page 231. A long invitation. Long enough for you right where you are to make a decision for the Lord. Whatever it is that you need to make.